Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ning and I'm here with our patch 12.9 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list which we post on the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around a high gold to platinum skill level. But we kept moving champions like Jason and Kali up on the tier list since. And when played perfectly, those champions are pretty broken. The thing is, people in gold and plat don't play perfectly. That's why we recently made a high elo tier list to differentiate what's objectively the best when played to perfection versus a realistic performance in middle elos. And that got us thinking, why not also make a tier list for the lower levels of play as well? I know it's tempting to try and lock in what the pros and high elo streamers play, but trust me, the best thing to do for climbing is acknowledging that sometimes, some champs are a bit too hard to pull off until you get better at some of the fundamentals of the game or just require better teammates that understand those fundamentals. And conversely, some champions are better at lower levels because their enemies aren't as coordinated or don't have the game knowledge and mechanics needed to counter them. So with all that being said, let's get started with this tier list, shall we? First, we'll start off with the top laners. We're gonna move set up to the S tier. All in brawls to the death are a lot more common in lower ranks, and that's the exact type of fighting that set loves to be a part of. This kit is perfect for it, with his low cooldown Q giving you strong consistent DPS, and his W always packing a huge punch if you use it once the bar is filled up. Wukong also gets bumped up to the S tier. Just like Set, he takes advantage of the more aggressive all-in types of fights that tend to happen here. While there are definitely some tricks to play him super well, his skill floor is pretty low. You don't really need crazy mechanics to pull off Wukong. More than anything, you just have to get comfortable with his passive. It's really easy to underestimate just how much healing you can actually get in early fights. In the first few levels, once an opponent cooldowns are down, you can literally almost out-regen their auto-attack damage. So keep swinging, and you'll come out on top. As an extra tip, you may want to run Ignite on Wu if you prefer split pushing to team fighting. It's really easy to bait opponents into close fights with it, and later on, it allows you to easily 1v2 the enemy top and jungle when they try to gank you while you're side laning. But if you prefer to group up and use his ultimate in team fights, just bring TP as per usual. We haven't really tested the new Olaf yet, so it's really hard to say where he'll end up. His kit definitely sounds OP, so we're putting him in the S tier for now, but this is very tentative. If his numbers are quite mediocre, his fight to the death style that he's always had will make him super strong in the top lane. Once we have more data after his update ships to live, we'll revisit this. Maybe he'll flop and end up right back to the bottom of the list, or maybe he'll surprise us all and end up being in the OP tier. Malphite moves down to the A tier. He's still a super good pick, and would be considered one of the best champions in this tier overall. But the issue is, there are some flaws with the pick that makes him just shy of being an S tier material at the moment. Against an AD champion, specifically an auto attack reliant one, Malphite would be considered OP tier. He stomps them in lane, both early and later as a split pusher, and he's definitely way more useful when grouped up. But if you end up against an opponent that you can't bully so easily, your only real choice to fall back on is grouping up and using his ultimate for teamfights. That's definitely a useful tactic, but since this list is gauged towards lower elos, that's not always a reliable one. We all know that some teams at this level of play aren't always... cooperative. While you're TPing in and pinging for the fight, you have an ally recalling in a bush 5 feet away, completely unaware of what's going on. So again, he's still really good, but a champion that can only rely on 5 v 5ing in some games just doesn't really quite make the cut for S tier. Singe also gets demoted to the A tier. In higher levels of play, the Singe one tricks are kind of crazy, so the champion has insanely high win rates in both solo lanes. But in the middle and lower elos, the champion is just pretty good. Most people don't really abuse the really niche things that he's capable of. So you're still getting a decently solid Juggernaut AP Bruiser, but he's not anything too special worthy of being in the S tier. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Echo gets demoted to the A tier. He's just lacking in the early pressure to belong in the OP or S tiers. He's not completely a lost cause, since he does spike super hard on two items, but even for a scaling pick, that's quite a long time. Fiddlesticks only needs his ultimate to do the same thing. As with the top lane, we're putting Olaf on the list with just sort of a guess on where he'll end up, but he's just one notch lower in the jungle, landing in the A tier. This is mostly because that Riot stated one of their aims with this mid-scope update was to give him a slower clear time. If it's not too bad, definitely could end up in one of the higher tiers, but on the other hand, if his clear is too slow, he could just easily just end up in the lower one. A champion can have an insanely overloaded kit, but if they get outpaced by every other champion in the jungle, it means absolutely nothing. While he sort of just fell out of favor in the jungle for a while, it seems like Scion is back and he's doing pretty well, so we're moving him up to the A tier. When you play a Scion jungle, it's obviously a very different play style than Scion top. Instead of literally split pushing to the death, you'll be playing with your team a lot more, making use of Scion's ridiculous health pool to serve as one of the beefiest frontliners possible. Hecarim gets promoted up to the B tier, but this isn't really anything more than a guess. Sometimes seemingly tiny buffs and nerfs really have huge changes on him, and other times it just seems like nothing happens at all. So he could end up right back in the C tier, or maybe he'll end up near the top. We'll just have to wait and see what happens once the buffs go live for this one. Card this is being moved down to the C tier. I was really hoping that this recent buff would make him viable in the jungle again, but there's still just no reason to play him here. Other farm heavy junglers are safer early on and come online much quicker. If you really want to play Karthus, abuse him in the bot lane. He's as OP as ever there. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. 
Kale makes her way up all the way to the OP tier. If you watch enough of our meta videos, you know that one of our core philosophies is risk versus reward balance in champions. There's nothing wrong with a champion scaling super hard. Hyper carries are actually pretty good for the game, but there can be a problem when a champion is able to scale super hard consistently. A champion that can basically 1v9 every game on 3 items should be pretty awful in the early game. But Riot doesn't really seem to have gotten the memo, because Kale is consistently somewhere between a 53 and a 54% win rate in both roles from patch to patch. Yet she's still completely, like me, untouched. So if you're really trying to climb, this is probably the best pick for you. Swain is getting moved up to the S tier. He was looking pretty rough right after his mid-scope update, but that was mostly due to the bit of a learning curve, since Swain has a pretty unique feel to him. But Riot went ahead and gave him a slight hotfix buff anyway. Now that people gone over that learning curve, he's popped off as one of the stronger mid laners. He bullies lane as hard as ever, but he now transitions those early lead much better into the mid and late game. Honestly, the most important change that he got wasn't to the functionality of his abilities, but the cooldown to his ultimate. Without his ultimate being up, Swain is pretty much useless. With that weakness being largely mitigated, there aren't those awkward windows of downtime in the mid and late game that you had to play around before. Until the pike changes go live, we won't really know how strong he is in either role. But since they're trying to obviously nerf mid pike specifically, we'll go ahead and move him down to the A tier for now. I will say they have tried to nerf mid pike plenty of times in the past, and those attempts were obviously pretty unsuccessful. Even with no AoE damage to clear waves, he's been in the S tier for years now. Who knows, maybe they got it right this time and he's finally out of commission in mid. Lux moves down to the B tier. Not too long ago, she was beyond broken in both the mid and support, but that's all in the past now. In her current state, we really want to just only pick her up in low threat enemy team comps, but those times are few and far between. Maybe once 12.10's durability changes go live, we'll probably revisit her as a pick. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Jin has been moved up to the OP tier. He's tied with Lucian for being the strongest early game ADC, but he's a much safer option, since he doesn't rely so heavily on having a super aggressive support to go in for him. He also doesn't fall off nearly as hard. Lucian does a lot of damage later on, but he has to dash into it. But with Jin, you're able to use the zoomies from his passive to run in and out of fights, kiting foes and chasing them down when you need to. Fane gets moved down to the S tier. She's still a really solid option, since she's a hyper carry that has a relatively safe laning phase, but she isn't oppressive like the other picks in the OP tier. Trisana gets promoted to the S tier. One of the biggest complaints for ADCs is just too much reliance on the rest of the team. The safest ADCs usually have the least carrying potential, while the hyper carries generally need a lot of peel and frontline to do damage. But Trisana is super self-sufficient and scales insanely hard, with her having a massive attack speed steroid and super high range later on into the game. Plus she does insanely high burst damage early, so you can stop playing with her and just snowball just as hard as any other early game ADC without having to worry about falling off later. Varus moves up to the C tier. Surely after this round of buffs, he at least belongs here, right? Hopefully, he'll be even better. But until we see how those buffs affect him, we're gonna just be guessing. The thing is, all three buffs are aimed at on-hit attack speed builds, but he's only really played as lethality for the past couple of years. So we will revisit this one once we have the data when the patch goes live. Jinx gets dropped all the way down to the C tier. After several months of being the best hyper carry in the game, Jinx has been finally knocked down almost all the way down to the bottom of the ADC totem pole. She still pumps out ridiculous DPS at 3 items, but getting there feels nearly impossible. To finish things off, we have our supports. Swain gets promoted up to the S tier. Same story here as mid lane, he started out kinda bad after the rework, but that was just people getting the hang of him. Now that they have him down pat, he's looking really solid. With supports being the ones that dictate lane, Swain being such a strong early bully means that you'll be the one running the show in almost all 2v2 matchups. Nautilus is being dropped down to the A tier, and honestly, that is just a little bit generous. He's just barely above average, with some matchups being pretty bad for him. There's definitely an argument for putting him in the B tier. This is probably one of the more controversial moves on the list, since a lot of players seem to claim that he's broken, but I think he's super overhyped. Even in Master Plus, where a lot of this sentiment comes from, more than 10 other champions have both higher performance ratings and better win rates. Finishing things off, we're moving Blitzcrank all the way down to the B tier. He was looking like one of the best support champs for quite a while, but even with no direct changes to him, he's sort of just fallen off. Since the support meta is roughly the same as it's been for months, this is most likely due to the shifting ADC meta. Previously, most games you end up playing against champions that Blitzcrank can bully easily in lane, like Jinx, Twitch, or Kai'Sa almost every single time. Now there are a lot more early game champions being picked, you don't really just have your way. Missing hook means that your ADC will be heavily punished by stronger enemy bot lane opponents while it's on cooldown. Sometimes even hitting the hook can go badly if the enemy bot lane is strong enough to turn the fight on you. And that about wraps things up for our patch 12.9 low elo tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Since picking this list involved going over all the champions in all roles, I'm sure that we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think that we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss the league further or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.